Hello kindred spirits and welcome to my spiritual oasis here where we souls come to find inner wisdom and peace. Today we are doing a soulful seven reading. So soul filling readings that you are meant to take with you for the next seven to ten days, the next week moving forward, a little bit of outlook um, perspective for the week as well as some encouragement and some questions to take with you to meditate on for the week. So I do have three groups prepared. Group one, group two, and group three. So pause the video at this time if you need a moment to meditate on which group has your message in it. Without further ado, we're gonna get right into the readings. Hello, group number one, and welcome to your soul-filling seven-day week reading. So these are timeless messages whenever you are finding this message it is meant for the next week for you to take with you so let's flip over your guiding energy okay so we have the seer so this week we are really focusing on future prospects we're focusing on the decisions that we need to make as we are planning for our future and the decisions that we are making are forward thinking and focused on the outcomes of these um, decisions for the next you know many years to come and we are also seeking guidance if we need it so whatever that looks like for you whatever that means for you whether that's from a spiritual guide like myself um whether that's from a, a psychologist psychiatrist a counselor um a friend a family a pastor whatever a friend a family a family member a friend or a pastor whoever whatever that looks like to you you are seeking guidance and it could also be like a mentor um potentially like this can doesn't necessarily just have to be talking about your spiritual journey but it could also be talking about other aspects of your life journey that you are getting some insight some assistance with um you know connecting with some of these messages on a bigger or broader um level so I think it's more just like the focus is really like getting some insight doing research doing some due diligence as we're preparing to um make these decisions making sure that we're making them from a place of an informed position and a place of confidence in the fact that we know what we're deciding <laughs> what we're getting ourselves into if you will so we also have the wolf moon as well as the hunter moon. Okay, so abundance and hunger. So what I am seeing here is just a time of just a strong desire to like accomplish what you're after. This hungry energy, this hunger is really talking about to me the message that I'm getting from it is that it's really talking about um, a hunger for life, a hunger to pursue the passions and the interests that you're after. Could just be talking about, you know, a hunger in, or a desire to um, chase after a dream, potentially even going after that position or whatever in your career that maybe up to this point you might not have had complete confidence in yourself to be able to pull it off now you're really just feeling the urge and the desire to bring these desires to fruition um and abundance so this idea of manifesting abundance into your life the type of abundance that lasts a longevity a you know, that, that like planting a seed to reap the, the harvest sort of abundance. Um, you're looking for wealth and not like riches here. Um, it's kind of what, what I'm feeling present. So there's really just a desire this week to focus on things that are going to bring you that long-term abundance. Remember, we're the, we're the seer energy. We're looking out to the future. We're focused on 
um, things that are more big picture here. So we're looking for long-term abundance. We're looking for wealth. Um, we're looking also for passions is what I'm feeling in the hunger too. Like pursuing passions, pursuing things that really, um, that we really feel from the inside out and not just, um, just kind of doing things to do things like we're really digging deep and feeling things on a deeper level so we have earth school as well as star brothers so what i see in earth school is this idea of studying and higher learning so as we are preparing for the future there is an understanding here that um, some lessons need to be learned, whether they are life lessons, just everyday experiences and, and lessons that we learn in our life along the way, or whether that requires us to get higher education or additional education in our lives. So whether we are pursuing some sort of higher education feels very real and very practical at this point in time when we are um, being pulled to look further in the future. So, for example, is saying, you know, you're not just looking to the next, you know, um, position that you could go. For example, if you're talking about a career or something like that, you're not just looking at, you know, what's one level up. You're looking for, OK, where do I want to be big picture in 10 years? And is there any kind of education or information that I need to obtain in order to make it to that? further out points so it's like doing the digging you know it's for example you know the hunter moon can't come but for um you know the the planting of the seeds the well the the prep the preparation of the soil and the planting of the seeds has to happen before you can reap the rewards so to me this is like okay we're starting at the beginning we're figuring out what we need to know what we need to learn in order to reach that place of abundance to reach that end result, that goal. And also making sure like as you're kind of working through some of this stuff this week and journaling and doing those sorts of things that you're also looking at what does abundance look like to you? You know, I feel like when we say the word abundance, it feels like it's very much so connected to the worldly realms, you know, money, assets, things like that. But I could also see seeing it mean many different things to different people depending on what your values are. So making sure to take an account of what you see as abundance and how you define abundance um, so that you can make the appropriate decisions to get to your place of abundance and that you're not living someone else's abundance so ooh, yeah we've got the world and the five of cups as well as the knight of pentacles and the ace of swords okay all right, so I feel like it's very befitting that the Knight of Pentacles is by the Wolf Moon because the Knight of Pentacles is about putting in the work and the effort to accomplish what you're after. So this could be talking specifically about worldly realm things. Um, for example, uh, putting in the work to, you know, the, the Knight of Pentacles is, is, the, is the energy that fertilizes the soil, toils, you know, turns over the dirt, plants the seeds. They're the worker bees of the situation. And with the pentacles being present, it's really talking about the practical things, make taking practical steps in order to put put into action what your vision is. Um, understanding that there is work and there is effort that is needed in this particular situation to accomplish what you're after. So I am feeling like for some of you that abundance does incorporate worldly things. And again, it might not necessarily be all about the pentacles. It could also like money and assets. It could also be talking about health, wellness, um, those sorts of, you know, the physical, our physical um, health and wellness is also a part of that. The Ace of Swords, what I see in the Ace of Swords, um, is like a new idea that's gonna come. I feel like it's going to streamline 
the process. You know, as we're doing this planning and doing some thinking, there's going to be an idea that pops into your head, an aha moment, the lightning bulb is going to come on and give you clear direction on what you need to do in order to accomplish what you're after. And I also see um, in the Five of Cups, it's kind of like pushing past any sort of emotional um, disappointment or distress or uncertainty um, as you're going on this journey. Understand that it is a journey and it's a process. Trusting in the process and knowing that um, you, the universe and your your, gu your guides and your guardian angels and stuff are protecting you. They're looking after you as you go on this journey. And remembering and keeping in mind that you have the world at your fingertips. That the world card to me is really see your energy. It's about planning for the future. It's about understanding that whatever you want to bring to fruition, you have the power to do so. You have the power to manifest the life that you want. You just have to put your mind to it and move forward from that point. Um, I feel like the world also talks about dreaming as well. And I feel like it's connected to the seer energy, but a little bit different. Like to me, the seer energy is a little bit more concrete and a met metaphysical concrete, if you will, which doesn't make any sense at all. But um, I feel like the world is more like dreaming up what you want that future to look like. And then the seer is almost like the one who kind of brings it in, brings it to pass, sees how sees how to make it happen um sees what steps need to be need to be taken in order to get there whereas the world is more like where are we going um okay and then we have reflection see all aspects of your self through the reflection of the one who mirrors your hidden self And we have Magnificent. You are amazing, magnificent, and unique, but most importantly, you are enough. So what I'm really feeling here with these two messages is I feel like the Magnificent's message is really, again, just encouragement that you have the world at your fingertips. You have the ability to manifest the life that you want. And the reflection is basically saying, you know, your life is a reflection of you. The beautiful thing about that is if you don't like what you see, you can always upgrade yourself, your thought process, um, you know, what you want out of life. You can always upgrade that. You can always change that and alter that as you need to in order to get to where you want to be um, in this world, in this life. So you have control over what you see, what is reflected back to you. So so this, these are the overall messages. And now we're going to pull some of our soul truth cards. Again, these are questions that you're taking forward with you for the week. Get the layouts get a little snug, but we'll make it. Okay, so we have what passion am I ready to pursue? I feel like this is connected to the hunger here, that wolf moon. So you can read this if you want to. I feel like this is really just talking about, you know, chasing after things that pull that are we're passionate about that we're excited about um like hearing somebody talk about something that they're exciting excited about gets you excited you know it's that transference of energy um living the life that you want to live is exciting so what do you want your life to look like and feel like and then like knowing that you have the power to make that happen what am I grateful for right now? So if you find your, yourself maybe just overly stressed out or feeling anxious about 
life or where, where you think you're going in life and all these other sorts of things to me gratitude is the solution to that um just really being able to to lean into what you're grateful for what you already have um and then being able to from there move forward I'm like okay this is what i have i'm really grateful gratitude um encourages peace i often find when i am grateful when i share gratitude with myself and i lean into what i'm grateful for it often shows me um or often what happens after that is peace like peace of mind because you're not worried about what you don't have because that's what why your mind is spinning out of control and you're stressed out and anxious because you're you're focused on what you don't have whereas gratitude allows you to focus on what you do have allows you to be in that moment and peace settles in there calms your mind and your soul and your spirit and and lets you know that you're on the right track you know life isn't um you know there's there's complications and layers to it so just kind of leaning into that and being okay with that too and then the final question am i ready to let go of this buried shame so you if you have things in your past that you're shameful about um releasing that shame you know opens up your ability to receive love and other various different types of love and blessings and different types of things in your life that you may feel like you don't deserve because of the you know because of shame and other types of of energies that uh, might be present in your life so releasing shame forgiving yourself always say forgiving yourself of trespasses um and even of like mindsets or thoughts or whatever, you know, the manifestation of the shame is releasing yourself of that and of that burden is really going to open up various different areas of your life. So beautiful soul. These are the messages that I've channeled for you today. Um, let me know down in the comments which of the three questions that you're taking with you for the week to journal and meditate on. Make sure to click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not already a part of the Kindred family. Would love to have you be a part. Um, please also do connect with me on my socials. So TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, whichever one you prefer, connect with me there. Um, as well as checking out my Etsy shop. Uh, I offer personal readings and curate other types of spiritual content to help you on your journey. So my beautiful soul, these are the messages that I have for you today. Appreciate your time and your energy, and I'll see you in an upcoming reading. Bye. Hello, group number two, and welcome to your soulful seven reading. So soul-filling messages that you're meant to take with you for the next seven to ten days. So the next week moving forward, um, messages that you need to hear right now, focus for the week. Uh, as well as taking a look at some questions that you can take with you to meditate on, to journal through for the week. So let's flip over your guiding energy. So you have water spirit. Okay. So water spirit is telling me that the focus for your week is going to be on your emotional world, taking a look at memories, life forces, and just emotions in general paying a lot of attention to your how you feel journaling how you feel um if you're feeling nostalgic and tapping into a lot of memories or feel like you're going down memory lane a lot track that information journal through that information uh focus on like are these happy memories are they sad memories um and kind of just like allowing yourself to feel whatever it is and then, you know, if they're not good memories, why are you having these memories? Like really just digging down into your emotional world, your emotional life and figuring out how, um, you know, what this means to you. Is it holding you back? Is it lifting you up in your life? Like um, really analyzing and paying attention to your emotional, your e emotions and your world of emotions, relationships, um, being very mindful of your moon energy as well. 
So the cycles of the moon, you could even keep a moon journal where you track like your feelings during the cycles of the moon um, for either this week or even for a month moving forward just to kind of like track some of that energy and have that data available to you. Um, is this week a sentimental week? Does something maybe tragic or something difficult happen emotionally this week that's going to have you going down memory lane or feeling emotional? Um, so just kind of being mindful of all of these sorts of energies that are playing out right now in your life and in your emotional world. And um, yeah, just paying attention to your heart space and your moon energy. So your emotions. All right, so we have the blue moon as well as the waning Gibeus four. So there's going to be something beautiful and unexpected that happens to you over this week in your emotional space. So whether that is, you know, overcoming some sort of childhood trauma or some sort of emotional experience that happened to you, um, like overcoming that energy, moving past that energy, moving forward from the energy, no longer allowing that energy to consume you or take over, um, you know, your thoughts and your heart and all of that stuff. Um, it could be a lot of different things, but it's going to be something unexpected, something you didn't expect to happen this week. That's really beautiful, really positive and uplifting. So that's really exciting. Again, in that heart space, in the emotive realm. So we have trust the timing as well as deep cellular healing. And I'm really feeling deep cellular, cellular healing for you guys. Um, a lot of physical and emotional healing over the, the, the week. And just understand that, yes, these readings are intended to be for the week moving forward. These are a focus, but that doesn't mean that your everything that's going on with you emotionally is going to be cured or healed in a week. It's just saying this is the beginning of the journey. We're starting here. We're starting now. We're starting to work on our physical and emotional healing today. We're paying attention to our emotions. Uh, we're not downplaying or discrediting how we feel anymore. It's really just an opportunity to say this is where we are beginning. Um, and again, I feel like the healing process, that physical and emotional healing, that process of healing is going to evoke something really unexpected and beautiful. And with trust, in the, trust the timing, um, I feel like it, it's a message that says time is not running out. You know, time, yes, it's, it's finite on this earth. It's finite, but time is infinite in a spiritual sense. And also to understand that even though we have a limited number of, you know, years or whatever on this earth that we don't know when our clock is going to be up, there is still a lot of time, you know, God, you know, God willing, universe willing that you don't pass at a young age. But the idea here is that time is not running out. And this is an encouragement to take your time on the things that really matter. Healing yourself from the inside out, working on your health, well-being, mentally, emotionally, spiritually is something that is worth um, spending time doing and doing right and taking your time doing because it's going to benefit you from the point you decide to do it moving forward. So we do have fruition, which is talking about, basically just an encouragement saying that your dreams and visions will definitely come to fruition. Trust the timing, right? Be patient, um, continue to, to do the positive good things that you're doing to um, invoke these, these energies. Um, and then we have no limitations. So you are a celestial being with unlimited potential. There is a much for you to share. There's much for you to do. Um, while you are manifested here on this earth. So to me, this is an encouragement that um, it, it just feels like magician energy. Like you have the ability to manifest the life that you want and to know that time is not running out you have the time that you need your dreams will come to fruition right now right now in this moment the focus is on your spiritual healing 
so especially if you're the type of person that likes to charge forward when it comes to everything else except for looking after yourself and caring for yourself then this is an encouragement for you to take a step back my darling and um Pay attention to you, what you need, what you need to be manifest in your life um, from a physical, from like a healing, emotional level, <clears throat> putting some other things on pause for a little bit or just like taking the focus off of them, not saying that they're stopping. They're just, they're just not at the forefront of the conversation. Okay, so we have... Justice, the Three of Wands, the Two of Pentacles, and the Eight of Wands. So with the Two of Pentacles, I do see that there's going to be some balancing, like a balancing act in the, you know, in the physical world, balancing career, business, making money, you know, success, all of that stuff with the physical healing, you know, portion of things and wellness and all that stuff. So there's going to be some balancing, a balancing act kind of happening for you, especially over the next week or so as you're juggling like real life things and your healing that we're starting now. Um, so just know that there's going to there's going to be some balancing that's needed, potentially some some discomfort if you're not used to this. But just know that um, finding that balance is going to be something that is necessary. Um, and as we know, finding our balance, sometimes we lose our balance. So being gentle with yourself as you go about this journey. Um, the Three of Wands, what I'm seeing is this. The Three of Wands to me is connected to this fruition. So the Three of Wands, it's like. You know, if we think about the wands in general, the, 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 you know, ace of wands is that idea, the spark, the passion. Um, the two of wands is you're figuring out, you're trying to plan for what you want to do. And um, the three of wands is you made a decision, what you're going to do, what you want to manifest, what your dreams are, and you cast that energy into the universe. And now you're kind of just waiting to see what comes back to you. Uh, so the message that I am getting from the three of wands is that um, you know, this is a patience card to me. It feels like a patience card that yes, you put out into the energy and this week you are, you are putting out into the energy or out into the ether in the universe, the type of energy that you want to receive. And then it's like, now you're just waiting to see what ships return to the harbor, um, for you. And in justice, what I see for the next week for you is a focus on to me, this is a balancing thing, um, but it's also like being fair. So being fair to yourself as you're going through something that you've not gone through before, being fair to other people, finding balance, um, embracing and leaning into truth. What is your truth? What do you truly want from this life? Does that differ maybe from others? And that's okay, like moving forward from all of that. But it's really just finding truth and balance and um, fairness as you go through this process, okay? And then our Eight of Wands to me really just talks about <clears throat> um, energy. The Eight of Wands is really telling me here that the universe is behind you, giving you the energy that you need in order to pursue this in a way that is going to um, be positive, right? So the, the universe is sending you energy, um, sending you the energy that you need to accomplish what you need. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, just know that the energy that you need is also coming your way um, in order to pull again some of these dreams and things into um, into the forefront of life and to have that emotional balance having the emotional like uh, fulfillment and healing as you go through this process just know that the passion and the energy that is needed for this process is coming your way, okay? 
All right, so these are the major messages. We're gonna go ahead and pull some questions for you to take with you through the week. So as I shuffle out our questions for the week, I wanted to go ahead and uh, encourage you to follow me on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram. I'm always um, posting to those and sharing different things, giving little messages here and there that you might need to hear for the day. Connect with me there if you're interested. Check out my Etsy shop and get personal readings there on Etsy, as well as I carried other, other content to help on your journey here. All right, so these are the three cards we pulled. Where am I with my health goals? So I feel like this is very much totally connected to our conversation today with the physical healing, emotional and mental healing present. Um, so setting some health goals, taking an account and being honest about where you currently are and what you need to do to get better, to do better for yourself. Um, and just this is really talk about your physical wellness and physical well-being. So if that is something that is a is a question to you right now, or you could do better on that, that very well could be a, the question that you take forward with you for the week. So the second question is, am I consistently showing up? I feel like this is about like, again, holding on to those dreams that you have and not giving up on them, just knowing that sometimes we have to re-strategize and figure out how we approach them in a different type of way um, rather than giving up on them. So making sure that you're showing up every day to your life and that you're pursuing um, the passions and things that you're interested in along the way. So that could be a question that, that you take with you. Are you, are you showing up? And from whom can I release my judgment right now? And understand that you, yourself, you might be on this list, um, releasing judgment as you go through this journey and understanding that, you know, it's all a challenge. We're all trying to work it out. We're all trying to figure it out. You're not alone um, by any stretch of the imagination as you go along on this journey. So beautiful soul. These are the messages that I've channeled for you today. Let me know with a comment down below which of the three questions that you're taking with you to journal and meditate on for the week. Um, yeah, click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not already a part of the Kindred family. would love to have you. And also, yeah, I already said, connect with me on my socials and check out my Etsy shop. So thank you so much, beautiful soul, for your time and energy today. And I will see you in an upcoming reading. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hello group number three and welcome to your soulful seven reading soul healing messages for, that you are meant to take with you for the next week moving forward the next seven to ten days let's see what your guiding energy is today the healing temple of the lunar light, life cycles, energy healing, communication. Okay, so our focus for this week um, is we're taking a look at energy healing and communication in general. Just communication, energy healing in our lives. So let's get into some of the other messages okay so we have the thunder moon which is all about change okay so that makes a lot of sense this week that we're focusing on change figuring out different ways of how to change how we communicate with ourselves and with those around us as well as the waxing gibbous three which talks about boundaries so lots of change specifically around how we communicate our boundaries, making sure that we're setting healthy boundaries for ourselves and for those around us. Setting boundaries, like some of us feel uncomfortable with it, with setting boundaries, because we feel like we are somehow um, putting limitations or, you know, challenges into a relationship or into a situation. Um, and we feel like we're not being loving by setting those boundaries. It's uncomfortable. 
Um, but really, it's loving to set boundaries. It's loving to let somebody know when they're crossing the line, what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. It's loving for them and it's loving for you. And I feel like sometimes we put other people's feelings, emotions, and thoughts over our own. And to me, there's really an encouragement here for you to put a bit more emphasis on your own emotional well-being and mental health by setting those strong, loving boundaries with those around you. So that feels like the um, the focus of our conversation today is about setting strong boundaries and how to communicate those strong boundaries. So we also have star ancestors and called added to our conversation. And what I see here is you need to set these strong boundaries because you have gifts that you need to tap into right now. You have soul gifts. You have... Um, could even be spiritual gifts, the ability to your empathetic empath energy presence. I feel it. Um, but you have the ability to um, to really help others. But in order to help others right now, you have to help yourself by establishing boundaries. Establishing boundaries with those you love is the most challenging. So being able to do that will help set you up for when you're connecting with others outside of your, you know, direct connections, you're able to put boundaries around your energy, what you're willing and not willing to accept in situations in general. So um, know that the boundaries that you're setting is not just for your current circle of people, but it's also setting you up to hold strong boundaries in the future when you're really going to need it as you step into your soul gifts and talents that's present here and the star ancestors is talking about um lost wisdom looking deeper and hidden secrets which i feel like it's very much so connected to your soul gifts so you might not be aware specifically that you have gifts or you might know you have gifts but maybe you're not certain what those gifts are um and the message that I'm getting here is that's going to change, that you're going to come into knowledge, you're going to come into training, mentorship, um, in order to be able to step into um, your purpose and the wisdom that, that was lost, digging a bit deeper, overcoming any challenges or upsets that might have you know, been causing you strife, struggle, um, in the, the past, present, or the future. So we do have the King of Swords present here, which could represent a person in an air sign coming into your life. Um, this person is all about the truth. Slicing through lies and deception. This person is all about the truth and um, ideas as well truth justice ideas practical mind so if you find that you're more of an emotional person a more emotive person especially empathic energy this could be representing a person in a near sign gemini a libra aquarius but it also could be representing energy that you need to pull forth and be more discerning, be more um, leaning more into the truth, not letting people BS you, um, not BSing yourself, just kind of um, being a little bit more logical and less emotional in your decision making, especially when you're setting these boundaries, right? Because if we lean into these boundaries as an emotional thing, it's going to be upsetting and difficult to do. But the message that I'm getting here with the King of Swords is that the king of swords is very logical very reasonable the king of swords is fair um and truthful and there's going to be a lot of emotional satisfaction and um just a, like emotional confidence and satisfaction actually that comes from taking a stance on what you want and what you know you deserve in your life so uh, it might feel uncomfortable at first 
but know that once we we get to that point there's actually going to be a lot of um a lot of uh, of comfort and energy and positive emotional output that comes from that truth and leaning into it even when it's gonna it's gonna be uncomfortable because it's change it's something different change is always uncomfortable um at first and then we get used to it and then it's not as uncomfortable it's less um it's a little bit easier to do the second and third and fourth and fifth time as we as we go along that that path there all right so we have the chariot as well as the, as the knight of swords so um again our, our focus is about communication i think it's interesting that the that the king of swords and the knight of swords was present so the king of swords is a very mature grounded mental energy whereas our knight of swords is a little bit more wild with it okay so i feel like the knight of swords here is saying a couple of different things first of all to me this is a progression of energy like yes the king of swords is where you want to end up you want to be in a place where you are confidently able to um, be truthful and honest with yourself and those around you um, as well as being fair and um, you know truthful and honest and all these sorts of things whereas the knight of swords is kind of like the um there's a there's a um <laughs> a learning curve if you will so our knight of swords can be a bit brash when it comes to communication kind of just saying whatever's on the mind um yes about truth but can be antagonistic in a way so i just want you to be aware as you are as your communications change and you're going through the healing of protecting your energy you're going through the process of protecting your energy and therefore healing your energy um, if it's been busted and bruised along this way and leaning into your gifts that there's going to be some trial and error there's going to be some times where communication isn't completely 100 but just know that it's a journey and that's really what the chariot is about we're on a journey we're moving forward we're moving towards these things that are really positive and strong in our lives but we're not going to get there overnight okay there's a process there's a journey um that we are embarking on as we do this and um that's okay that's okay um so we have upside down strength you are being guided by the cosmos stay strong a positive outcome is assured as well as wisdom okay you are being guided by the cosmos stay strong a positive outcome is assured okay see your adversaries as opportunities to expand your spiritual light so i feel like this is talking about the knight of swords as we go through changes as we set boundaries um you know everyone's not gonna like that everyone's not gonna like the boundaries that we set. it's change it's uncomfortable nobody likes change um but it's like you know there's going to there's going to be a desire for verbal sparring and wisdom is basically saying see these see these as opportunities to, opportunities to expand your spiritual light so instead of digging into them in a negative sort of energy dig into them in a positive sort of energy where they are an expansion they're an opportunity for you to say for you to, to pause and come up with something loving to say um pause and figure out if and when you should say something like that sort of thing so imbuing some wisdom into it as you take your journey from your knight to your king energy right so there's a there's a process there um and it's okay to lean into that process all right so those are our overall messages we're going to go ahead and shuffle out some questions for you to take with you for the week as I am shuffling away over here um, 
just wanted to, you know, encourage you to connect with me on social. So Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, and check out my Etsy shop. I do personal readings as well as curate other kinds of content to help you on your spiritual and life journey. Okay, so we have some questions falling out. How can I be more flexible right now? Okay. What are you trying to control? Is it time to let go? Okay. Flexibility. As we make these changes, flexibility is going to be one of your strongest assets. So how can you be more flexible? Especially for those of you who tend to like to control things more. <laughs> Where can I ask for more help in my life? Ooh. All right. Those of us who struggle sometimes asking for help before like our eyeballs fall out of our head. I, I'm bad at it. But it's good to ask for help. People want to be helpful. I know sometimes I feel like, or you, I feel like, so you might also feel like you're inconveniencing somebody or, you know, whatever. Um by asking for help you might feel like you're inconveniencing them or whatever um you're being needy or whatever the case may be but just understand that people want to be helpful you want to be helpful like when someone comes to you for help um you know you want to help them out often especially if you are you're able to do so so don't feel afraid to to ask for what you need and if what you need is help then ask for it did you see the back of that card Hope so. Okay, and then the final question, do I know all my strengths and am I using them? So I think a, a lot of times we focus on our weaknesses, right? We focus on the things that we wish we were good at, that we wish we had. We're looking at what other people are doing with, with their gifts and we're wishing that, that we had that. Instead of focusing on us and what our strengths are, what we have to offer, and how we can nurture and grow those things. So I feel like that's connected to the calling of the soul gifts, focusing on your strengths, focusing on what you want to see happen and not about what you don't have or what you can't see happen or what other people are happening. Um, so if you have a difficult time acknowledging your positive attributes and what your strengths are that could be a really good question for you to take with you for the week to meditate on and to journal through so my beautiful group number three these are the messages that i have channeled for you today i certainly hope this was helpful and enlightening for you and encouraging for you as you move through the week Please do drop a comment down below and let me know which of the three questions you're taking with you and or any messages that resonated with you that you, you know, are empowering you and that you're taking with you forward through from now into the future. Um, please click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not already a part of the Kindred family. Would love to have you. Um, yeah, check out my Etsy shop where I curate content to help you on your spiritual life journey. So thank you so much, beautiful soul, for your time and your energy today. And I will see you in an upcoming reading. Bye.